Good evening. How are we all doing, people? Welcome to Monday night's live stream podcast recording bite size. I am Chris Ford and I'm wearing a Leeds Rhinos top because I'm a hero. How are we all doing, people? Thanks for tuning in. So, live show tonight because it's race week. London Marathon Race Week is here. If you didn't know, I spent the weekend in Manchester, which we're going to talk about. So if you're new around here, this is our weekly uh, live stream. We do we do two live streams a week, uh, usually. And this one is me hanging out with you guys. And this works very well because hopefully you tune in live, you get into the comments and you talk to me amongst yourselves and all that sort of stuff. So whether you've got questions about the London Marathon, whether you've got questions about what to do now you've completed a marathon, whether you've got questions about running shoes, kit, coaching questions whatever it is i'm here for the next half hour or whatever it takes to get through all the questions and stuff so fire away into the comments section people get involved okay uh if you're listening to this as a podcast thank you very much for taking us out on your run with you um like i said we record this live viewer interaction is paramount to this uh so yeah again get involved and we shall go from there so okay um where do we start where do we start where do we start Let's talk about Manchester. So Manchester was awesome yesterday. Congratulations to every single person who ran the Manchester Marathon yesterday. Congratulations to Helen, who just completed the Boston Marathon. I've just literally seen her finish the Boston Marathon. So well done, Hell's Bells. You're probably not listening to this, but congrats to you anyway. And yes, that was pretty awesome. So uh, Manchester was amazing. Uh, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a good event. I know there were some issues around some people finishing later, which we discussed on previous podcasts, but I have to give a shout out to, there's a guy who was there, right? Listen to this. I'm going to get his name because he was an, honestly, he was an absolute legend. I'm going to find his name for you because it's these sort of people like the um, St. John's Ambulance people who are just so amazing. Let me see if I can find his name. Right. It was a gentleman at the finish at the Manchester Marathon called Gary Fish. Okay. He works for the human race events. I so like the people who organize the Manchester Marathon. And he was just an amazing human being. And, and as the runners were coming in, I was right on the finish line. I don't know if you saw any. Um, I don't know the vlog's out Sunday. But I was right at the finish line. And he, he could see the runners who were in trouble, if that makes any sense, as they were crossing the line. He was literally grabbing them before they collapsed on the floor. Or if they were wobbling, he would be the crutch in which um, they needed. And he would take them through to St. John's Ambulance. You know, that guy had sick on him and everything. And it was just... It's just incredible to see another human being doing stuff, you know, because he wants to help other people so selflessly. And I, I was just thinking, like, if I came across the line, that's the one person I'd want to see. He was just amazing. So, again, big shout out to Gary. You were incredible. St. John's Ambulance were amazing yesterday. I think a lot of people went for it yesterday because the conditions were almost perfect. Um, there's a lot of people coming through that finishing line who needed their help. So they were brilliant. So well done to all the volunteers, St. John's Ambulance, and obviously, Gary at the finish line. So if you know that, Gary, let me um, let me know that we mentioned him on here. So, yes, uh, this week's London Marathon Week. Busy week. Started taking the beat root, beat root, shots, beat root shots today, uh, which is kind of cool. Uh, so I take them for six days if anybody wants to know what that's all about. So that started. Uh, for those asking about my London Marathon shoe, the video is coming tomorrow. So you've got to wait for that. And plans for this week. So plans for this week, a couple of things that you need to know. Firstly, I've just seen that uh, you're going to be getting your T-shirts for the London Marathon at the Expo this year, it seems. Just seen uh, the email that's gone out. So just make sure you don't forget to get your T-shirt, which is new. Uh, the London Marathon Shakeout for 40 runs. So thanks to everybody, by the way, who came to the Manchester Marathon Shakeout run. I was blown away. Despite the conditions, right, we had probably the worst conditions you could have had for a shakeout run, yet still hundreds of you turned up. So thank you very much. Thanks to Brooks. Thanks to Upper Running for supporting that. Uh, but the London Marathon one, we're doing a little bit differently. We're going to the seaside. We thought we'd 
team up with Brooks and do something a little bit differently. There's going to be a lot of shakeout runs going on in London, which is, you know, whatever. I don't want to get into that. But we we'll try and offer an alternative to going into the city for because a lot of us will be going into the city for race day. So if you want to come down to Chalk Beach Park Run on Saturday, we're down there. And that's going to be a lot of fun as well. So uh, that's the plan for Saturday. So make sure it's obviously free. It's part one to come along to. Now, if you're joining us now, five minutes, a little bit later, get in the chat and comment section. Let us know whether you've been racing this weekend. Let us know whether you've got London this week and ask away any questions, shoe related, taping questions, what to do after a marathon question, what anything you want to talk about. Get into the comments and I'll work my way through there once we get going. Uh, and so the last bit, uh, shoes, very quiet, which is super, super nice. So I've been able to get more miles in some of the other shoes. We've got an uh, Under Armour uh, Velocity Elite 2 video coming out, which, come, funnily enough, came second at the Boston Marathon. Uh, I can't remember the lady's name. She was wearing them. I've been running in them. And we've got a video coming out of them this week. And, uh, yeah, so just uh, continue to put miles in some of the other shoes that we've got, which is great. Gives me an opportunity. I know the Triumph 22 is incoming. Uh, that goes on sale on the 1st of May, I think. So I know uh, that's incoming. Uh, so hopefully it's here next week so I can get some recovery miles into it. That'd be kind of cool. And, yeah, that's probably about in terms of shoes uh, in general. It's pretty quiet, which is always is this time because it's marathon season. So you, you tend to find that quietens down. And then lastly, plans this week. At the moment, I'm planning on going to the Expo on Wednesday. I always traditionally go on the first day. I prefer to get there and get it done. Uh, that's the way I tend to do it. I prefer to go over to the Excel Centre on, on the Wednesday, on the first day, and get it over and done with. That's usually the plan. Running-wise, I ran today just three miles at sort of target pace. I'll do another run on Thursday, probably similar sort of thing, to be honest with you, three, four miles target pace. And Saturday, park run, shakeout run, super easy. I'll be mucking about. We've got a lot of stuff going on down there with Brooks. And then obviously Sunday's the race. So that's that's my plan for this week in terms of running and everything else, really. And there's some other stuff going on. But ideally, the least, the less I do, the better. Uh, because I've had to change my taper around because where I was sick. So that's the plan. Uh, right, okay. I think that's about it. Oh, don't forget, if you're doing London this weekend and you want some inspiration for Mile 20, download our uh, motivational podcast, uh, 20 minutes to 20 miles. That's free. And again, last time, uh, if you're joining us slightly later, get in the comment section, ask away. I'm here, you know, for the next whatever. Uh, get your questions in, get your comments in, whether it's about running shoes, whether it's about coaching questions, you know, tapering, what to do after marathon, races whatever it is i'm here for so just jump in there on, on the live stream so at first we've got to give barbara a shout out. she's become a member of the channel you can do that you can support the channel by becoming a member um so big shout out to all our members on the channel i really do appreciate it, actually uh so barbara's done that tonight so thank you very much barbara i appreciate that uh evening ashley uh me and beth are listening so I think they're excited about the London Marathon. Uh, didn't Benny Boy do good yesterday? Yes, he did exceptionally well. All the runners did exceptionally well yesterday. I was proud of every single one of them. Uh, but Ben, obviously, uh, I don't know if you've seen it, if you're not in the Facebook group, but he, or on Instagram, he ran a 10-minute PB. Watch the video on Sunday. There's a story behind it. Uh, but he absolutely smashed it. Abs but everybody smashed it. But Ben, Ben really smashed it as well. So super proud of him today. Uh, I think he could go quicker. He just has to stop training with me, who's slowing him down, <laughs> basically. But yeah, he, he's super proud of him. Super proud. But like I say, super proud of everybody. Uh, I've got to give a shout out to all my runners, the ones that I coach as well. You know who you are. Well done to every single one of you who went out there and smashed it as well. Actually, the last couple of weekends and um, race is coming up. So hopefully you're at home resting and chilling out. So evening, everybody else. I'll just say evening to everybody. Uh, Ryan, what's this? Uh, what atmosphere at Manchester? Four hours and 13 minutes at 18 minute PB. I'm over the moon. Well done. I was looking around for you at the end, but mobility was limited. Yeah, I was at the start. I was like the unofficial starter, which was awesome because I had total unrestricted access. And then I was like a cheer station at mile six on my own, which was very cool. And then I was right at the finish line. As soon as you came over the finish line, I was there, uh, which was just superb to see that. And as I said, that, um, which is an experience to, to be part of that big event. I think they had like 30,000 people take part yesterday. So to be part of that 
Uh, I know you guys were seeing me all over the live stream and that lot yesterday, which is kind of cool. It's kind of funny. But yeah, it was, it was super awesome to be that close to the action yesterday. Uh, Martin, uh, his son went to school today and had his, lost his voice because he was shouting at the TV yesterday. That's so cool. Uh, Matt from Ohio is joining us. That's very cool. We like that. Here she is. Dawn smashed it. GFA qualifier. You've done well, girl. Well done. Proud of you today. Nice top. Thank you, Matt. I've got my Leeds Rhinos top on. Uh, if you're in the Leeds area, make sure you get along to the AMT Henley Stadium. Every Wednesday, 6.30, we've got a free club that meets up there. Oh, welcome to join it. Evening, everybody else. Thank you very much, Gary. Sound of Vision on point. Again, if you're joining us late, get some questions in, get some comments. Uh, okay, so this is a good one. Any tips on post-marathon muscle soreness? My calf is hating me. <clears throat> well, that's totally natural. Uh, funny that. But as I said to my runners this week, uh, take a week off, please. If you've done a marathon, take a week off. Now, that doesn't mean sit down on the sofa, eat crisps and whatever Easter eggs are left. I want you to, you know, one or two days, you know, listen to your body, but then start getting a real active recovery. Walking is so good after a marathon. I've said it before on, on numerous podcasts we've done is walk the marathon out of your legs. Walking is amazing. And if you feel like it today, get out there and walk. Walking is so good for the recovery of, of running a marathon. It really, really is. It's the best thing you can do. Low impact, but you're moving. Uh, so yes, that's, that's my recommendation on that. Obviously, you know, baths and things like that, Epsom salts, people like it, people don't like it, but I find it works. And then obviously you've got all the muscle balms and stuff like that that you can go and buy. But yeah, best thing you can do really is just to walk the marathon out of your legs. That's the best thing you can do. Uh, and just take care of yourself. It's going to take a few days, uh, to get over. Uh, Pablo, any recommendation on exercises for sore hamstrings, Fordy? Yeah, just, uh, I mean, to be honest, there's, there's so much stuff on YouTube in terms of hamstrings, uh, stretches and mobility exercises all, all around that. Uh, there's, there's loads out there. Just, just Google it. I mean, it's literally just as simple as that. Personally, you don't want to just like be overstretching them, but yeah, I, I would definitely get on YouTube and, and do some of the stretching or mobility work that's on there. It might not be your hamstrings, it could be somewhere else that's actually tight. So that's the other thing. Try and find that. I'll see if it persists and go and seek medical advice, osteo, physio, someone like that. Uh, Simon, hello, evening, Simon. Uh, he ran his first marathon in Manchester yesterday. Everything went perfect, non stop, uh, in it, four hours and 27 minutes. Well done, amazing atmosphere, loved every second. Yeah, it, it seemed like a good one. It, it kind of reminded me, which might sound a bit nuts, but it kind of reminded me of Great North Run. But like in a marathon, and what I mean about that is like it was a, it's not disrespect to him, it's, it smelled, it smelled, it felt like a smaller event, but with loads of runners. And that's the thing with the Great North Run. It's a huge event, the Great North Run, 60,000 runners. But because there's so much energy and vibe around with everybody, it feels, I don't know, it just feels a little bit smaller and a little bit, but in a good way. Like, you, you know, you're not doing a one of these big large scale events. And I, and, I, and I felt the same about Manchester. It was a, it was a good one. Matt Nash. He loved the shakeout on Saturday. Thanks for coming along, Matt. Again, make sure you come along to the uh, South End for the London Marathon shakeout. And he ran a PB of 3.49. Jesus. Great route and support on course, especially the cheer squad. Yeah, we've got to give a shout out to the 40 Runs cheer squad at mile 20. They were amazing. Uh, Organisation after finishing left a lot to be desired. Okay. Yeah, so I saw some of that, some, some complaints about the organisation after you finished. I know it was a little while before we got uh, Benson Water. Uh, so I, I can understand what you're saying there. But again, it's it's tough, you know, to organise these uh, these big events. I think it is, you know, they're always learning. That's the thing. You've got to give, I think what Manchester, what's happened with Manchester, I think this is what some people may have missed, is that it, it, it slowly but surely become the sort of second uh, marathon in, in the country um, after London, I would say. They obviously got Brighton, but I think it took, where Brighton had so many problems, a lot of people have started have started to do Manchester, and I think the guys at Manchester Marathon, in terms of the event organisation, are, are learning all the time, and quite happy to admit that they're learning all the time, and quite happy to improve all the time. And I think they're doing some work towards improving. So I think next year's event again will probably be an improvement over this year's because they'll learn from it. These people aren't idiots; they do the winter ten k. So you know that's just one of their events. So I think they will learn every every time. Um, 
so I think you've got to, yeah, you've got to appreciate that it's a learning curve for them as well uh, to give them benefit. And, and I'm the first person to go two footed on, on an event. So, for example, like, and it's in the video on Sunday, Adidas had a pop up shop at the at the Manchester Marathon. It was absolute waste of time. Uh, so, uh, you know, again, hopefully next year, I'm going to say like an expo, but it'd be good to you know go somewhere that you can hang out and see some stuff. Maybe people want to buy some stuff. You know. It's a golden opportunity, but I think, um, yeah, so it's, it's, there's room for improvement, is my point, I think. But all round, uh, it seemed to be a, a good event. Uh, what's this one? Dan, London Marathon question. Uh, are there plenty of paces? Yes, yes, there's loads of paces. Yeah, you've got no no issues around paces uh, at London. There's, there's plenty of everything. Uh, it's, it's talking of well-organised. London Marathon's like up there. Uh, evening from Blackpool, uh, Simon. Good to see you at the finish yesterday, Chris. Oh, thank you. Very nice to meet you, Chris. Uh, Simon. Uh, it was it was crazy. So many people coming through, going, "All right, forty, all right, forty, all right, forty. It was, it was just awesome. It really, really was. Uh, another one. Oh, here's Mick. Mick, anyway, Chris. Good to see you at the start. Yep. Great weekend with the shakeout run. Managed a twenty-seven minute, thirty-one second PB of just over four hours. Well done, Mick. Got it not to go under four. Yeah, you will, son. You will keep doing the hard work, and you'll get under four. Don't worry about it. You got you got to remember, right? Marathons are really hard. I think it's again, it's that sort of TikTok, Instagram era, where every influencer is going out and running marathons every week because it's a really cool thing to do. They're really hard, right? I just let you know. It doesn't matter if you have the sweetest training block ever, and the wheels can come off in an instant. Marathons are very, very, very hard. Doesn't matter how good you are. If you don't get it right, whether you over trade, under train, get your fueling wrong, go out too fast, go out too slow, get stuck in the, you know, whatever, they're really hard to get right. Yeah. And you tend to only peak for, you know, for one correctly, you know, every so often. There's always something that comes up. So to be able to go out and, and run a PB is great, but to be able to go out and finish, I think, is, is even sweeter because they are really hard and they will show up any any sort of weakness. You know, it doesn't matter what it is on the day, but they will show show up on the day. It's, 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 marathons are hard. Don't under ever underestimate how hard a marathon is. As I say, I appreciate we live in the world where every man and his dog seems to be running a, a marathon because, uh, you know, it looks good on social media, but they're really bloody hard. Trust me, they are really, really hard. Paige, Mr. Yum Yum. Evening all. Well done to everyone and complete yesterday. I can confirm that eating a yum yum before a big race is not the best thing to do. Yes, he he, he went um, a little bit rogue yesterday and started eating yum yums after being late for the shakeout nearly as well. But we won't mention that. I don't think I did. I cut him out. Of the, I think I might have cut him out of the um, shakeout run video as punishment for it. That's his own fault. Um, evening, Chris. Any interest in the Hocus guy with X Super Blast Grand? Now, now here's the thing with this. Hoka Skyward X doesn't interest me because, and I don't think it's, I don't necessarily think it's a fair comparison against the Super Blast because it's a plated shoe as far as I'm aware. I might be wrong, but as far as I'm aware, there's a plate in the Skyward X. So I don't actually think it's a uh, comparable. I also don't think it's comparable because of the weight as well. My Super Blast from memory, okay, this is purely from memory, are around nine ounces, purely from memory. That Skyward X thing is about 11 ounces, apparently. Yes, it's got 50 mil of stack in it. I don't actually feel like it's fair to compare it against the Super Blast. I think there's a totally different shoe. Compare it against the Primex Strung. Compare it against the SC Trainer. They're two shoes you can compare it against. I don't feel it's worth comparing it against the Super Blast because I tell you now, the Super Blast will destroy it. Absolutely destroy it. Because of the weight, purely because of the weight, which gives it versatility. I focus on weight because it, it, it allows you to do multiple things. If a shoe's too heavy for me, then it's it's limited in what I can do with it. I don't want to then put that shoe into a 20-mile long run. Because at the end of that 20-mile long run, yeah, I get the argument about, oh, it's going to be benefit you from having heavier shoes, lighter shoes, almost. I get all that. But I'd still rather train in like a nine-ounce, nine-and-a-half-ounce shoe and then go and put on you know, seven, eight ounce shoe for race day. Yeah. If you're, if you're going on that argument, but I just don't get, well, I, I understand why the Hocus 
Sky with X is getting all this kudos. But I don't want to get into that because I don't want to be negative nanny about, you know, all that sort of stuff. So, um, no, I'm not good. I, I've got, listen, if a pair arrive, yeah, I'll, I'll go out running them, do the mileage, do some reviews on it. But there's, you know, it's getting to a point now where there's, there's a reason why they don't send it to me, I think, after some of the reviews we've done. Um, it's not surprising, really. But again, I've always got to be honest. I can't I can't dress it up any other way. But no, no interest in the sky with X uh, Super Blast comparison. And I don't personally think it's a noticeable, um, it's a worthwhile comparison. I think the comparison you make is the sky with X versus the SC Trainer and the Prime X. I think the Super Blast just kills it purely, purely for weight without even going into anything else. So there we go. Hey, David just got back from Manchester. Uh, well, Ashley, what start are you in on Sunday? I am with Hayden uh, on San Sunday. We're both in wave. Oh, is it four? I think it's four. Yeah, it might. I think it's four. That's a guess. I know I'm off at 10.20. That's what I do know. So hopefully see you out there. Uh, Claire, evening, Chris. Uh, Rashi from Staffs here. First marathon for me yesterday. Still buzzing. Did way better than I thought. Four hours and eight minutes. Well done. Felt good when I finished. Let's hit me today. Yeah, it's going to hit you today. Again, take, if you've done a marathon uh, this weekend or last, you know, do one this weekend coming, take a week off. Yeah, but actively recover. Listen to your body, but actively recover. Walk that marathon out of your legs. All right. Honestly, it's key to getting over a marathon. The best way is to do, if you've got a dog, walk it. More than you've ever walked it before. Poor thing will be looking up to you going, you're having a laugh here. But honestly, it's the best thing for you is to, is to walk it out. That's what I'll be doing next week is a lot of walking to get that marathon out of my legs. Uh, evening, Bethany. Uh, and again, if you're tuning in lastminute.com, get your questions and comments in the chat box. We film this live as a podcast. So get your comments in. It could be about running shoes, coaching, what to do before or after a marathon, whatever it is. All right. And I'll go through them. Uh, and then we'll finish when I've done them all. So, Beth, evening 40. I've uh, been super inspired after seeing everyone's achievements yesterday. Yeah, it was amazing, wasn't it? Watching the Manchester live stream was like a 40, 40 fied <laughs> version of Where's Wally. Yeah, there was a lot of our runners out there. It was, it was very noticeable how how many runners we had out there. I was going loopy as I was spotting you all. Uh, and there was just so many out there. It was just incredible to see. Uh, and great effort from everybody. Uh, just a superb effort e e everywhere. Wherever you are. Okay, question. Now Brighton is in the bag. What UK marathon would you recommend for next year? Uh, I've done London, Brighton, Loch Ness and Edinburgh. I'd go Manchester. There you go. We answered that one, bam, bam, really easy. I thought it was going to be a harder question. Try harder next time. <laughs> um, okay. Barbara, who's a new member on the channel. So again, if you missed it at the start, you can become a member of this YouTube channel and that supports the channel. Helps us make videos. So thank you very much to everybody who is a member, including you, Barbara. Why does the marathons not start the slower runners first? Well, London Marathon actually do do that. So they don't get a DNF and get swept off, swept off the feet. I ran a half marathon slow run. Okay. Yes. So um, this is in reference, I think, to the Manchester Marathon. So Manchester Marathon had a cut of time yesterday, six and a half hours, which in fairness, because we went over this on one of our podcasts, uh, they do make that absolutely clear when you sign up that there's a cutoff on the marathon. Agree, disagree. That's irrelevant at the moment because they do state when you sign up that there is a cutoff time. Now at London Marathon, they do, because I know uh, one of my runners that I coached last year, uh, he was looking to run eight hours. Uh, he did an incredible effort and uh, he started earlier in the day, said so the full length of the day. So I do, I do know that marathons do do that. They do slow start some of the slower runners first. So um, that makes a lot of sense to me. That, re that really does. Uh, the chat box is missing from the screen. Okay, let's sort that out. Uh, hang on. Try now. There we go. Thanks very much, Mark, for letting me know that. I appreciate that. Uh, right, Sarah. Hi. Oh, hang on. Hi, Chris. Ran Manchester yesterday. Unfortunately, my headphones died at mile 19, so I couldn't listen to your inspirational podcast. I have my first trail half next month, so I'll save it for then. Yes, again, Sarah, if you haven't listened to our 20-minute mo uh, motivational 
speech at 20 miles, then make sure you download it. It's free for everybody to get on the podcast. A lot of people really like that. So thanks to everybody again who's joining us. It's, it's great to have you all here for this live stream. Get your questions, comments in the chat. It's London Marathon Week, people. We're getting excited. I don't know. Boston's just completed some, for some people, which is awesome. Uh, Beth is saying thanks for the motivational episode. You're welcome, Beth. Thanks for the idea. Lucio, evening. Ran Manchester Marathon yesterday, three hours and 26 minutes. I would have seen you at the finish. Weather conditions for the race were ideal. I think it's a good alternative if you can't get... I, I, I tend to agree. Next year, we found out on Friday, they're on the same day. So if you don't get in the London Marathon, London Marathon ballot will open at the weekend. Um, But if you can't get into London, I would recommend going to Manchester. Just be aware again, there's a, there is a cut-off time, Okay. So just be aware of that. But I, I would strongly recommend you go to Manchester and do the Manchester Marathon. I really, I really would. Uh, I've been to Brighton and Manchester. I've not ran both, but I've been to them. And uh, from what I've seen, I would much rather go and do Manchester than Brighton, my own personal opinion. So, yes, um, I would definitely um, sign up for that if you don't get into London. Uh, but well done on your 326. I'm sure I would have seen you at the finish. I was there. Uh, I was there from when the winner crossed the line. I was lucky enough. And well done, Adam, for for winning that yesterday. Uh, he's a super nice guy. I, I um, was chatting to him after he finished. Again, I was really lucky with my access yesterday. And just such a normal, nice guy. Interesting story. He didn't have the um, Adi, you know, the new Adidas, the 400-pound super shoe. They didn't have his size ready for him to race. So he had to run, had to, had to run in the Pro 3 because he didn't have the uh, new super shoe available in his size 12 because he's got uh, big feet. So that's kind of cool. But yeah, he so he's explaining that to me. So I said to him, why wasn't you in the, the Adidas? And he was like, oh, yeah. I had to wear the Pro 3, but he still absolutely destroyed everybody. Uh, Ryan is running London this weekend. Absolutely scared solid. I, I, I'm i with you. My confidence is probably at an all-time low. The 32 kilometers in my training, can't possibly imagine how I can go further than that, which absolutely could. Um, Ryan, best thing you can do is, is break it down. Uh, honestly, just break the whole the whole day down, the whole event down everything so i've said it i think before if you're running london break it down first three miles you come out of greenwich or wherever you start is you're up and down a few bits and then you get to the point where you meet everybody first three miles focus on that focus on your pace when you've done that your next focus is on getting to cutty sark that's at six miles the crowd will blow you away just think about getting to cutty sark once you've got through cutty sark and you're on an all-time high Think about getting to mile 12 because mile 12, there's some aid stations on the left. You get a cup of water and then you're going to turn right and you're going to got Tower Bridge, which will blow your mind. After Tower Bridge, you'll turn right and then you've got the halfway stage. So already a halfway round. And look, we broke it down there into a couple of bits. Be thinking from mile mile 13.1 that you want to get through Narrow Street, which is coming up, you know, 15 miles, 16 miles. And then you're going to turn left down Mud Shoot which is the next point you want to get to. Go from Mud Chute to Canary Wharf, 18, 19 miles, because at 19 miles, there's going to be a lot of noise because the 40 runs cheer station are going to be there. They are so loud. They're on your left-hand side at mile 19, the 40 runs cheer station. Watch out for them. They are so loud. Mile 19, left-hand side. You've done that. Tick the box. Your next thing, you want to get to 20 miles. You'll see that lovely 20-mile side. Once you've done that, you want to get to Tower Bridge again. See the Tower of London. That's pretty awesome. On your left-hand side, you're going down a hill to mile 23. And then you've got to go on the embankment. Embankment to Big Ben, believe it or not, three miles. That's all you've got to do. Get there. You see the start scene. You'll come through Blackfriars underneath the underpass. You'll see the London Eye. Get to the London Eye. You've got two kilometres less left, 1.62 miles to go. Once you've got through that, you'll then get to Big Ben. Turn right, Birdcage, 800 metres to go, 600 metres to go, 400 metres to go. 265 metres to go. Bang, turn right at Buckingham Palace. You're done. That's how you break down the London Marathon. That's how you've done it, right? There you go. You're welcome. Next, uh, what can I do to stop maranoia? I feel like I have a bad anchor. I, listen, I know, um, Adam, I'm with you 100%. Uh, just, just go on TikTok. <laughs> just go on TikTok. That's about the only thing I can suggest. Uh, Joff, even thanks for spotting me yesterday. Uh, got a 10 minute PB 342. Well done, mate. That's incredible. Uh, congratulations. Good to see you out on course. Uh, Monica, 
looking forward to London. I cannot wait. Hopefully the crowd is good there. Yeah, it's good. It's not as good as New York, right? I could put that out there, but it's pretty close. It's pretty epic, especially at, um, what's it called? At uh, Canary, Can Canary, Canary Wharf is loud. But Cutty Sark, Tower Bridge and C Canary Wharf are like three loudest. But even Narrow Street feels like everyone's on your head. It's kind of nuts. So check that out. Uh, Gaz Morris, big shout out to the Staffordshire Satellite Crew. They saw me on my own shakeout. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah, brilliant. So we had a big shakeout run and everybody uh, got everybody involved at the shakeout run. It was just like absolutely incredible. It was just how at, at the shakeout run in, in Manchester, everybody it doesn't care where you're from, who you are. Everybody got involved. Everybody was chatting. It was just so awesome. A uh, question from Apple Tree. Chris, when you ran Berlin with a bad back, how did you know uh, you would hold up for the distance and that you didn't need to pull the plug ahead of time? Um, I uh, was seeing my osteo and I took medical advice, which I think is the best thing to do to do all the time, basically. So, yeah, I took medical advice whether I should compete or not. And when I say compete, that's probably the wrong word when I ran the Berlin Marathon. Uh, it was just to get around. But I had a strong plan in place in which to deal with where I was. I knew where my fitness uh, level was. I knew basically where I was totally in terms of the, the, the whole thing. So I knew that if I just sort of trotted around around four hour mark, I was okay with that. It got to about mile, I think Benetton, I think it was 20 or 22. Started to niggle a little bit. So we really backed off. Uh, and uh, he was taking more selfies and doing more live streams, doing more singing, which actually was the best day ever. So, yeah, loved that. <sighs> Lauren, evening. The trains from the northeast are cancelled this weekend. No, I not ideal. We are now going to travel on Friday and do a shakeout at Greenwich Park Run. Lauren, come to Chalkwell Park, um, Chalkwell Beach Park Run. Get on the train and come and see us in South End, sunny South End. Evening 40, evening Trevor. I'm going to sign up for my first half marathon. Should I run at, for a time or just run? No, always run for fun. First race event, always run for fun. 100%. Thanks, guys, for everybody who's tuning in tonight. I really appreciate it. It genuinely means a lot. Uh, it blows my mind the numbers we get tuning in live, considering how small we are as a, as a channel. And don't forget to, 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 to spread the word about the YouTube channel. Yeah, We don't pay any ads or you know, do any sponsorship in terms of like, you know, like people to push the thing out. Tell everybody about it. But, right, Tony, for someone who uh, pronates, would the Pro 3 be better than a race shoe? Yeah, the Cello X1 is not a race shoe from Hoka. I'm just telling you that now. It's not a race shoe. The thing is two and a bit ounces heavier than the A6 Meta Speed Paris. Two ounces. It's not a race shoe. It's a, it, to be honest with you, I think Hoka have made a really big mistake by making that shoe so heavy. It just did not need to be that heavy. And I don't think you can classify it as a race shoe when it's that heavy, personally. When you've got other shoes in that category that are a lot, lot lighter. Okay? So, yeah, I don't think... I think they made a big mistake with the weight. Hopefully they change that. So, Pro 3 all day long. Um, and I think uh, you'll enjoy the Adidas Pro 3. Very popular shoe at the Manchester Marathon. Oh. Have you any experience of, no, runner's toe? I do not. So, James, I'm going to pass on that one because I don't know. Sorry. My bad. But, again, I'll always be honest, I, if I don't know something, I'll tell you. Uh, so, Joanne, she ran a new PB yesterday at Manchester. Well done. What is a good marathon to do next? Well, if you don't get into London, then we've heard good things about Brighton. You know, you've done Manchester. Or maybe look abroad. But what's super interesting is a lot of the, the good ones abroad, like Valencia and Amsterdam, already sold out, which is just amazing. York's meant to be very good. Chester's meant to be very good. Uh, so they're ones to consider, maybe. Uh, okay. Uh, in terms of sketches, just as a, a bit of an update, uh, there's going to be new shoes from them in the new year. Um, so hold tight with sketches. There's some very cool things coming. So you've been warned on that one. Uh, recovery runs Max Road 6, but I don't think you can get them here in the UK. Speedgo absolutely loves his Max Road 6s. I mean, he lives in the things. They're an unbelievably comfortable shoe. I love mine. And if the Triumph 22 doesn't arrive in time, I'm going to be in them 
all next week. So uh, they're the ones I would recommend. No, Cheek. Well done to everyone. She managed a five-minute PB at 3.11. Well done. Richard, uh, loving, uh, love running with so many 40s yesterday. I uh, ran across the line with Kathy Ellis. She's going to be at our cheer station. I'm heading that up. Corinne Harding, who picked uh, me up on the final corner for the sprint finish. 32-minute PB. Congratulations. Uh, well done to you. Well done to everybody. This is just amazing how many people. I'm trying to get through the comments. I've just seen the time. But thanks again to everybody who's who's joining us. 40, after Manchester, I've got a Brum great run in a month. I'm going to be there, Simon. I'm going to be doing the half. Two weeks, medium runs and some intervals in an easy week. Yeah, I, I would really listen to uh, listen to your body and just go to feel. Do you know what I mean? Just try and find your way, feel your way through that. Uh, the recovery is the most important thing, like I said earlier. Walk the marathon out of your legs. That's the best thing you can do. And then just feel your way back in. You won't lose any fitness. Debbie, thank to all the 40s who uh, chatted to me at Manchester. It helped me calm down and made me feel at home during my run. Well done, everybody. Uh, doing my first London marathon, Mark. Uh, he's excited and nervous. Mark, I shall see you there. Let's know what start you're in and what day you're going to the expo. Andrew's doing his first marathon at Blackpool next Sunday. Good luck. Feeling prepared, looking forward to it. I'm definitely going to keep uh, positive attitudes after some of your excellent tips. Thank you very much, Andrew. Make sure you download our um, 20 minutes of um, motivation at 20 miles. Check that one out. Uh, Bethany's considering the Chester uh, Marathon in October as a step up from a half marathon. Has anyone else done this? Yeah, Chester's a new... Uh, uh, smash the like, Pete, what Steve said. But yeah, Chester, I was looking for the comments because someone was saying... Um, Chester's quite good. Simon, 316 PB yesterday. Well done, Simon. Chicago in October. Uh, I keep hearing it's pan flat. Apparently it is. Ben ran a PB there. Well, an old PB because he smashed it yesterday. 40 from Matt. I heard a rumour that the Adidas Adios 9 is expected to release in September. Do you have any info on when the Adidas Adi Zero SL2 is expected to release? I live in the US. I do have some dates um, for stuff, but I'm not allowed to share them unfortunately. Uh, but I do know stuff from Adidas is coming, which doesn't help anybody. I appreciate that. But I, I do have some dates, but I'm not going to say anything because I don't want to get myself into trouble. I hope you appreciate that. But yeah, there's stuff coming soon. <laughs> I hope that, that doesn't help at all, does it? Uh, Oliver. Oh, he's answering Simon's uh, question, which is awesome. Robert, uh, 40 breaking down the London Marathon. Sounds like a cabbie taking the knowledge, the test. Yeah, it's probably a bit like that, wouldn't it? David, he ran uh, Manchester yesterday, 256. Jesus Christ, what an amazing day. Got my good for age. Uh, what major do you recommend doing? London, obviously. New York is amazing, but the course is brutal. Uh, I've not done the others. Oh, I've done Berlin. Do Berlin. Come to Berlin with us in October. I think everybody's going to Berlin. Even if you just come to support, come to to come to Berlin. Sally, I say that's the best breakdown of a marathon she's ever heard. Thank you. Bloody hell, he even knows much. I know the course like the back of my hand. Look, look at all those medals behind me. The London Marathon e breakdown was epic. You should do it. There is a video on the London Marathon. It's like a two minute video we did uh, on it. I, I think I, I don't think I speak on it, but there is there is a breakdown of the course. And that's that's the best way to get out to get through the to get through the London Marathon is to break it down. Uh, do, do, do. Mark, I, I've got to give Mark some kudos, right? If you're not in the global run crew at 40 runs, you need to get in. It's a virtual group that goes out twice a week. We set on a Monday and a Wednesday, we set you four runs that you can choose from. Anybody in anywhere in the world could be part of this, okay? It's free to join. It's got its own Strava group. It's it's just crazy. And Mark does an amazing job bringing everybody together. So thank you, Mark, for everything you do. But he's really grown that. And it, it, if you're not in it, if you're a solo runner or you're somebody who goes out and trains in the week, get involved. I say there's four sessions to choose from each week. It's a thriving community within 40 Runs. It's so awesome to see what Mark's doing with that group. So get involved. Go over to 40runs.com and check out the Global Run Crew. You could be anywhere in the world, Ohio, you know, wherever you were earlier. You know, just get involved in it. It's, it's just incredible. So thank you, Mark. Uh, Robert Smith, do you suffer from post-marathon insomnia? I, I suffer with insomnia most days. I have ADHD, so I don't really, I struggle to sleep anyway. 
Oh, look, nearly there, nearly there. Robert, even Chris, any plans to run the Super Halves down Prague? Um, I would do. I think, any, like anything, Robert, it comes down to money uh, and time. Uh, I've got an extremely busy, basically, time up, up until August. Uh, most weekends are now taken, which is, you know, I, I, I've got family, so... But I appreciate that, you know, I like to you know get out there and it's important that I'm out there like I was at Manchester. So um, I have to balance things out. I would like to do some of the super halves, but it comes down to, to money, basically, in my time. Uh, I, you know, I have a full time job, so I have to, you know, the time off, I can't afford to take time off. I get 20 days holiday a year. So, you know, with everything else I'm doing, it's a bit crazy. And then obviously I've got the weekends as well. So. It's quite nice the weekends I don't have anything because obviously then I'm spending time with my family. So it's hard to justify spending the money that I could spend on my family than, than doing those things. If, you know, if somebody was lucky enough to say, you know, here you go, for we go do the Super House and if, like Super House did that, then great. Like when New Balance took me to New York, but otherwise I'd never have been able to afford that. So um, that's, that's, that's the honest answer. I'd love to do it, but it's like anything. It's just time and money. Um Okay, uh, Charles bought the Cumulus 26. I've seen my video. I think you'll like them. Uh, and do I know when the Bondi 6? No, I've, my Hoka experience at the moment is relatively low. I do like the Mac 6, by the way, getting some miles into them still at the moment. Um, so I really like that shoe, but I don't really have a handle on Hoka at the moment for whatever reason they prefer. No, I'm not going to say it. I'm just going to say nothing and move on. And here we go. Last one of the day. Mark here. I hope you know how much we all appreciate. It. Yeah, that's a great way to finish, Lauren, actually, giving Mark some kudos. I think that's a really nice thing to do. So thank you for that. Right. So that's it. Well done, everybody, for lasting this long, putting up with me for that long. Uh, I really do appreciate, honestly, seriously, I appreciate everybody who tunes in live. Um, it's amazing how many of you show up every Monday and, and hang out with me. I uh, Thank you very much. It uh, blows my mind. We're a tiny little channel comparison. So you know what's out there so thank you very much I, I really appreciate it thanks to everybody who said hello to me uh in manchester and hung out with me pictures and all that sort of stuff shouted at me when i was up on the gantry and, and all that sort of stuff it was it's a, it's it's just great um that we that we see all this sort of stuff so thank you very much i i it, it means the world to me um right i think that's it so again just as a as a heads up London Shakeout is not in London deliberately. We're at Chalkwell Beach Park Run in Southend. It's, if you're not running London and you want to come and like smash out a fast park run, get down there this weekend. Brooks are down there with us. It's a very, very fast course. You go out flat, back flat. Sweetest tarmac you're going to run on all year. Uh, so if you're looking to put a time in, get down there this weekend. Come and join us. Hang out. So I'm expecting to see hopefully a lot of you down there. Uh, it's a great one to do. And if you're doing London, you can just trot up and down the seafront and have a nice day out. And then obviously you've got London the next day and we can go there. So good luck to everybody who is running London or whatever you're running this weekend. Um, maybe I'll bump into some of you at the Expo on Wednesday. If not, hopefully I'll see some of you out on course. I am planning to run hard at the start and blow up um, at some point and then walk. So if you see me walking, come and have a chat with me if you're walking as well, because I'm trying to prepare myself mentally for Berlin. So I want to go out hard as I can until I break myself uh, and then walk it in from there. Might sound a bit nuts, but that's deliberate. OK, so if you see me walking, come say hello, have a chat. And um, hopefully it's not too early in the race, uh, but then you can blame Hayden for setting the pace too quickly at the start. But yes, that's that's my plan for Mar uh, for London, if you're asking about that. The video for the shoe comes out tomorrow. Then we've got the Under Armour video coming out later on in the week. I'd recommend you checking that out. Really like that shoe. Uh, so check that out. We've got a few other bits of bobs coming your way as well. Manchester Marathon weekend video is coming Sunday. I think you'll like that. It was a good event um, to check that one out. We've got up to all the shakeout and stuff like that. But yeah, that's it, guys. I'm going to try and find the outro. If you've listened to this as a podcast, I really appreciate it. Be safe, guys. Again, good luck if you're running London. All the best uh, for the weekend. Take care. And where's the outro? There is. I shall see you all soon.